Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Erev Tov. Erev Tov. You know, when you say Boker or you say Boker Tov, you say Boker or. I'm not sure what you say after Erev Tov. Erev Tov, I guess, is a good way to respond. Good evening. Um, good evening to everyone. It's good to be here together at Solel. We welcome all of you who are joining us on our live stream this Shabbat as well. It's uh, getting towards the end of the month of October, and it's also getting towards the end of the month of Cheshvan. So we all know what comes after that. Kislev brings us into Hanukkah, just about a month away. I'm getting very excited. On Shabbat, we take a few moments before we begin services just to breathe in some peace and quiet, just to let go of the stress of the week, to center ourselves here in this place, in this time, in this sacred spot. So I invite you to just take a couple of deep breaths in and out, to focus on being here right now, not being anywhere else in our heads, but being in this spot, in this place. As we sing, as we pray, we say Shir Laronai Shir Hadash. We sing to you, God, a new song. Page 19, the words of Psalm 96. Candles. It's my pleasure to call upon Ruth Ostrauer, who is going to lead us in one of the meditations on page 20 or 21, and then we'll join together in the blessing over the candles, the top of page 23. We read responsibly on the top of page 21. This Shabbat sheds light upon us, light for the days to come. We have leisure by which to see the world with new and grateful eyes. We have time now to look inward. And now we are free to embrace family and friends, to make our lives simpler and more complete. We think of our homes and those we love, and when we call to mind the duties and affections of home, how greatly are all blessings enriched, all cares and sorrows softened. May the hearts of parents and children always be turned to one another, that our homes may be sanctuaries of love and devotion. May we use the Shabbat to bring happiness to our family life and blessing to our people. Baruch atah Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kishanu v'mitzvotah v'zivani v'hadut ne'er shel Shabbat. Maruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kishanu v'mitzvotah v'zivani Shall 
page 25, at the top of the page, the last stanza of the words of Yadid Nefesh. Yadid Nefesh is a piyut, it's a beautiful poem, a poem about longing to connect with the Holy One. And we sing the words at the top of 25, Nigale na, ufros chavivi alai, et sukat shlomecha. O God, show us your essence, yourself, and cover us with your sukkot shlomecha, your, your shelter of peace. Page 27. Who am I that she should wish to spend the day with me? I try out my strengths, cook, move dust, casually insensitive to all the songs reminding me that she the queen. In diamond, ruby, emerald, glow tiara would come to grace my table. She comes no matter how the week was spent. In joy or silliness, yet she comes, and I am her host, laying a linen flower tablecloth that is white that is all the colors of the rainbow. Come, my Shabbat queen, embodiment of worlds to be, your gracious kindness is our breath of life. And though we once, twice, all too often fail to say how beautiful your cape, how lovely your hair, your shechina eyes, we will not always be so lax, apathetic to your grace, your presence. Touch us again this week with your most unique love's tenderness, and we shall sing to you our songs, dance our dances in your honor, and sigh for you our sighs, longing peace and hope. With those words, we welcome Shabbat in the words of L'chad page 29.
of Barhu in body or spirit page 36 seated as we join together in the evening prayer for creation, the words of Mariv Aravim at the top of page 37. Rachel, would you lead us there? Of course. We pray to you, eternal Lord God, this time of celebration. Your word brings on the evening time. You open the gates of God with wisdom, and with foresight you need times past and seasons change. Your, Your plan sets, sets the courses of stars in the sky, creating day and night. night turning light into darkness, and darkness into light. You make the day fade away and bring on the night, separating day and night. You roll the look to heaven. We praise you, eternal one, who brings on the evening twilight. And as God as creator has brought on the evening twilight, we also are grateful for the gift of Torah, the words of Ahavad Olam, page 38. Ahavad
We praise you, eternal one, who loves your people, Israel, as together we rise physically or spiritually for the words of Shema on page 40, followed by the Ve'ahavta, these words which remind us to listen, to pay attention, something that's not always easy to do every day in the busyness of the day and the rush of everything. But and when we recite these words, when we lie down and when we rise up, we let them sink into our hearts, sink into our souls. They remind us when we go in to our homes and out of our homes to follow the mitzvot of Torah. Shema Yisrael Adonai Um, Rita, would you lead us there in reading Bet? I, Miriam, stand at the sea and turn to face the desert stretching endless and still. My arms reach for the sky and I want to sing the song rising beside me. My mouth open, I stop. Where are the words? Where are the melody? In a moment of panic, my vision goes blank. Can I take a step without knowing a destination? Will I falter? Will I fall? Will the ground sink away from under me? The song still unformed, how can I sing? To take the first step to sing a new song is to close one's eyes and dive into unknown waters. For a moment, knowing nothing, risking all, but then to discover the water is so friendly, the ground is firm, and the song, the song rises again. We sing those same words our ancestors sang, at the edge of Freedom's Sea, page 44, the words of Micha Mocha. Come 
As you redeemed Israel and saved us from arms stronger than our own, so may you redeem all those who are still oppressed and persecuted. Baruch atah Adonai Gal Yisrael, we praise you, Eternal One, Redeemer of Israel. And in the middle of page 45, as night falls, as the day ends, we close our eyes, we go to sleep at night. We pray these words of Hashki Venu. They say, God, watch over us, protect us, help us to awaken in the morning with renewed life and strength. Continue responsibly at the bottom of page 47. Arlene, would you lead us there? Why do we say our God and God of our ancestors? There are two sorts of believers, one for whom faith has been handed down from our ancestors. The other has arrived at faith through searching and contemplation. In the first instance, faith cannot be shaken, no matter how many objections are raised to it. But there is a flaw in this. Faith is passed on from generation to generation as part of our tradition, and so it may have been learned without thought or reasoning. The advantage of the second is that faith is reached through its own power, through much searching and thinking. But this faith also has a flaw. It is possible to shake it by offering contrary evidence. But the one who combines both kinds of faith is invulnerable. That is why we say our God, because of our searching, and the God of our ancestors, because of our tradition. Please join me in Chatzik Kaddish, the, the top of page 49. <laughs> Shall we 
Kobir Hatab Shirata, Tush Behatab Nehemata, Zamir Hamilma, Amen. We rise in body or in spirit for the words of the Amidah on page 50. Adonai sefatai tiftahu fi agit hilatecha Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Elohei avoteinu vimoteinu Elohei Abraham Elohei Yisara Elohei Yitzchak The words of Kiddushat Hayom, the holiness of this day of Shabbat, Yismechu v'malchudcha shomrei Shabbat. Those who keep Shabbat and call it a delight rejoice. On the top of page 
Dave, would you lead us on the top of page 59? I saw Jerusalem from Mount Scopus, and she was perfect and whole, little yet limitless, within her borders contained and yet uncontainable. Eastward, the hills of Judah, wrapped in white and blue, are ministering priests, and silently they meditate blessing and burn the snail shell incense. And on the hills and pits, the embers still whispering burn, as if spice were being fumed there in the twilight by the roasting of the sun's coals and senses of shadows. And all Jerusalem was for me like a single coal kept on the altar that each nation and guardian might come and brighten it with tongs and take from it an ember. Baruch atah Adonai amachazir shekinah tolatziyon We praise you, Eternal One, who brings your Shekhinah to Zion. And we offer words of thanks, words of Hoda'ah, together on the top of page 60. We gratefully acknowledge, eternal God, that you are our creator and preserver, the rock of our life and our protecting shield. We give thanks to you for our lives, which are in your hands, for our souls, which are in your keeping for your wondrous providence and your continuous goodness, which you bestow upon us day by day. Truly, your mercies never fail, and your love and kindness never cease. Therefore, do we put our trust in you. O God, our Redeemer and Helper, let all who live affirm and praise your name in truth. Eternal God, whose name is goodness, we give you thanks and praise. And we turn to the words of Shalom Rav, Prayer for Peace, page 63. Shalom Rav,
page 66. May the one who causes peace to reign in the high heavens, let peace descend on us, on all Israel, and all the world, and let us say, Amen. So I know Halloween is not a Jewish holiday, but there is certainly a great deal of stories in our tradition about demons and about visitors and about sorcerers and all kinds of things that go bump in the night. So I thought I would share a story tonight. This story actually comes from the Babylonian Talmud in Tractate Kiddushin. And it is a tale of a demon that has a bunch of different heads. Now, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, you might uh, recognize some of this story or the idea of um, the story in Fluffy, the three-headed dog, if you've read the series, right? And um, Fluffy is based actually on Cerberus where he, guide, he guards the gates to the underworld. But in the Harry Potter story, Fluffy guards the Philosopher's Stone. Now, it's not a three-headed dog, but the Talmudic story does tell the story of a scholar who is defeating a very frightening demon. You see, there was this demon that was haunting Abaye's study hall, a demon that was so powerful that even if two students were to go enter the study hall together, they might face harm. And so, Abaye happens to hear that a great scholar, Ahabar Yaakov, is coming to town, and he figures that such a great scholar might have the solution. And so this is a story that um, is told actually by Panina Shram, who is a wonderful storyteller, has, has rewritten and, and uh, written many books and stories, and she tells this story in one of her collection of, collections of folk tales. So one day, strange things began to happen in Rabbi Abaye's house of study. Chairs began to squeak. Not the chairs the students were sitting in and bouncing around in, but empty chairs. Also, books mysteriously began to disappear. Sometimes when a student was sitting and reading his book, it would mysteriously fly out of his hands and vanish. And when would the book reappear? 
only after he did not need it anymore. Now, it's bad enough to be bothered while you're studying, but it's much worse to be distracted during prayer, and that is what began to happen. Everyone's prayer shawl began to slip off, and at the same time, many of them had the feeling that something was tickling their noses, making them want to sneeze, and sometimes they did, and then everyone lost his place in the prayer book. At first, Rabbi Abaye didn't worry about these annoyances too much, but when he saw how these strange happenings began to interfere with both the prayer and the study of all of his students, even the best ones, he began to become worried. And then something much worse happened than the books disappearing or the prayer shawls falling off or people getting distracted in the prayer house. Strange noises started to come from the house of study at night Noises that sounded like pots being banged together and screeching like a thousand untuned violins all playing at the same time. Rabbi Abai tried and tried to ignore these noises. But finally he realized that he would have to do something. The situation was getting desperate. So he decided that the thing to do was to go to sleep that night in the house of study to see if he could discover the cause of the disturbances. He lay down and stretched out on a wooden bench in the corner, the one that was closest to the door. And after a long time, feeling anxious, he finally relaxed enough to let himself fall asleep. Well, at midnight, Rabbi Abaye was suddenly awakened by a strange, eerie noise and invisible shuffling sounds. He was so frightened that he ran out of the house to study as fast as his legs could carry him because he now realized that the Beit Midrash, the house of study, was haunted. Now it seems that even as a child, Rabbi Abaye had been frightened of spirits and demons, and nevertheless, what was haunting the house of study had to be expelled. And how could he do it? I'm not going back there at night, he thought, and it's far too dangerous a task for any of my students. It would happen, though, that soon a letter arrived from Rabbi Acha, the father of one of his former students. Rabbi Acha asked if he could come and study with Abaye. Now, Rabbi Acha happened to be a very, very devout man who never left a problem unresolved, and Rabbi Abaye thought to himself, he is just the one who is going to help us. But the more he thought about it, the more Rabbi Abaye was afraid that Rabbi Acha would refuse to confront the demon or whatever was disturbing them. So he decided, when Acha comes, we're not going to tell him anything about it. Instead, he cautioned the students, when Rabbi Acha arrives, tell him he'll have to sleep in the house of study because there's no room anywhere else. And that is what he did. Rabbi Acha arrived in town, and he, like Rabbi Abaye before him, lay down on a wooden bench. But unlike Rabbi Abaye, he had no reason to be afraid. So he just lay down on the bench, and he fell asleep. But at midnight, that same terrible noise awakened Rabbi Acha. He jumped up, and he saw a nightmarish monster coming towards him, a seven-headed demon, a dragon, for that's the shape that the demon had taken. Rabbi Acha was terrified. He pinched himself as hard as he could, knowing that if he were dreaming, the pinch wouldn't hurt. But unfortunately, the pinch did hurt, and he knew he was awake. His heart was beating wildly and faster and faster, and he stood frozen in place. As suddenly, the dragon roared, and the ground shook for miles around, and poor Rabbi Acha was frightened out of his mind. In his terror, Rabbi Acha began to do the only thing that he knew instinctually. He began to pray out loud. He prayed with the greatest fervor and intensity that he had known, for he was afraid that his very life was as good as lost. But when he pronounced God's name for the first time, a miracle happened. One of the dragon's seven heads flew off and crashed into the far corner of the room and disappeared in a puff of smoke. When Rabbi Acha saw this, he had his first glimmer of hope. He finished the prayer, and then he started to recite the same words all over again, even louder. And lo and behold, as he pronounced God's name a second time, another of the dragon's heads went flying into the wall and disappearing in a puff of smoke. So five more times, Rabbi Acha 
repeated the prayer, pronouncing every word with intention and, intention and intensity, with deep kavana. And each time, as he repeated God's name, the dragon lost another head, and its roar diminished until it could barely be heard. And the seventh time, the seventh time, the dragon lost its last head, and it vanished completely. At first, Rabbi Acha was afraid to believe the monster was gone, but when the silence was unbroken for several minutes, he took a candlestick in his hand, and he went around and searched every corner of the prayer hall and saw that it was empty. And then he gave thanks to God for saving him in his hour of danger. He prayed the words of Birkat HaGomel, and he hurried to leave the place. When he opened the door, Rabbi Acha was surprised to find Rabbi Abaye and all of the students crouched outside the door, trembling with fear. Assuming they had heard the terrible noise and had come to help him, he told them what had happened. And when they heard the good news that the evil spirit had been expelled, they all recited Birkat HaGomel, thanking God for protecting them from evil, and they celebrated. After that, Rabbi Acha spent many years studying with Rabbi Abaye. And only much, much, much later did Abaye finally confess to him that he had known of the evil spirit haunting the house of study and that he had been counting upon Rabbi Acha's fervent prayers to save them. Rabbi Acha gladly forgave his beloved teacher and together they, they gave thanks to God for expelling the demon from the house of study and for these opportunities to learn and to pray together. And that's the story of the demons and Rabbi Abaye and Rabbi Acha. That's in the Talmud Tractate Kiddushin. Lest you think that all of Talmud is actually about laws, there are some pretty good stories in there. Sean. Yes, yes. There are like tons of names for God. Which, do you know which name he used? I don't know what name he used. If you want to look it up, it's Kiddushin uh, 29b. I'd be happy to look at the text with you, but I'm not so sure it tells us. You know, there's, there's lots of uh, interesting stories like this, uh, especially many of them actually in Tractate Brachot. Brachot is the first tract of the Talmud, and it talks about blessings and goes through many of the, the blessings that are still part of our Siddur, our prayer book today. Um, and blessings are for lots of different purposes. Sometimes they are for frightening away, frightening away evil spirits or for frightening away things that scare us that go bump in the night. Cool. So... As well, there are lots of, lots of names, and some of which we're not even sure how they're recited anymore. So I invite you to join with me in the blessing, the prayers for healing, the words of Misha Beirach. We're gonna try the same melody that we tried last week, um, which is a call and response melody. The words for Misha Baruch that we usually follow are on page 133, if you want to turn there as well. Uh, this particular blessing comes to us from the story of Miriam. And the chorus is El Na Rafana La, which means God, I pray, heal her. On this Shabbat, we are praying in our community of the following. Shirley Herman, Esther Buchenmarkt, Rick Ballantine, Simon Green, Yvonne Dixon, Marlene Friedman, Linda Levenhack, Jack Kudlatz, Francis Van Tyne, Suzanne Sher Stimson, Bernie McLennan, Harriet Lachman, Jill Rich, Ellen Becker, Elana Miriam Barchava, Nicola Proetti, Lois Dean, Eliyahu Ben Yitzhak Basara, Phil Berkowitz, Liz Travis, Rebecca Bodbel, Parker Kaiko, Speed Sewer, Philip Shepard, Carl Katz, Gilanda Ruzzi, Nicole Hansen, Renee Marmorio, Raina Rowan, Rob Green, and Leah Haller. And if there are others for whom you're praying, I invite you to share their name aloud or to hold their name in your heart as we pray these words together. Remember what 
key we did last week. page 149. As we rise for the words of the Alenu prayer, we pray for the day when the world will be one and at peace. Oh, my God. 
Please be seated. Page 154. When cherished ties are broken and the chain of love is shattered, only trust and the strength of faith can lighten the heaviness of the heart. At times, the pain of separation seems more than we can bear, but if we dwell too long on our loss, we embitter our hearts and harm ourselves and those about us. The psalmist said that in his affliction, he learned the law of God, and in truth, grief is a great teacher when it sends us back to serve and bless the living. We learn how to counsel and comfort those who, like ourselves, are bowed with sorrow. We learn when to keep silence in their presence and when a word will assure them of our love and concern. And so even when they are gone, the departed are still with us, moving us to live, just as they themselves in their higher moments wish to live. We remember them now. They live in our hearts. They are an abiding blessing. At this time, we think about those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those of our friends and neighbors, and all those people whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. We are in Shloshim at this time for three. Erica Richter, the mother of Harry and the mother-in-law of Miriam Richter, the grandmother of Ryan and Marnie. Kenneth Rich, the father of Jill, the father-in-law of David Leposky and the grandfather of Rhea. And Lydia Andrianov, the sister of Francois and the sister-in-law of Gary Dvorkin the aunt of Guy, Orit, and Tamar, the great aunt of Troy, and the aunt of Joshua, Jeremy, and Liza Dvorkin. We recall as well the following, whose yard site, the anniversary of whose death occurs this week. Saul Walkman, the father of Jeff, and the grandfather of Erica and Karen. Cassandra Wright, the mother of Rachel. Maurice Campbell, the uncle of Rachel Wright. Martin Bobker, the father of Ron. Sophie Shapiro, the daughter of Howard and Deborah, the sister of Emma, granddaughter of Les Stock, and the niece of Marla Stock and Dave Lewis. Nathan Friedman, the grandfather of Harvey. Doris Spevek, the aunt of Cheryl Englander. Evelyn Carnett, the aunt of Roz Allen. Leo Francis, the brother of Shirley Evans, the uncle of Paul Evans, Susan Wilson, and Lisa Smith. Eugene Kahn, the father of Miriam. Helen Zimmerman, the mother of Emily Goldberg and the grandmother of Alina and Michelle. Louis H. Citron, the, grand, the father of Robert and Barry. Gabriella Forgax, the mother of Judy Miller. Lily Douglas, the mother of David. Sidney Davidson, the uncle of Robin Sarutis. And Reuben Levy, the grandfather of Sandra. If there are other names for Kaddish that I have not read, you're invited to either share them aloud or to hold those names in your heart. As we ask those who are mourning to please rise first. And we say to Min HaMakom Tina Hamu, may you find comfort in God's sheltering presence. Together as a community, we all rise to support those who are mourning and to say Kaddish for those who have no one to say it for them. As we join together in these words hallowed by the generations on page 159. <laughs> Yehe Shme Rabba Mabarach, Le'alam Olam Le'almaya. Yit Barach, Vyish Tabach, Vyit Pa'ar, Vyit Romam, Vyit Nase. Vyit Hadar, Vyit Ale, Vyit Halal, Shme Rusha Barichu. Le'ela Min Kho Birchata Vashirata, Tushmechata Venehemata, Damiran Me'alma, Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Le'chaim Aleinu, Ve'alko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. O say shalom bim ramam, hu ya say shalom, alenu ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'al kol b'nei adam, v'im ramen. May the source of peace send peace to all those who mourn, comfort to all who are bereaved among us, among all the Jewish people, and among all the nations and families of earth, as we say together. Amen. Please be seated. 
I want to share a few announcements on behalf of our board. Um, we have a lot of announcements. I won't share all of them, but do want to wish two mazel tovs this week. One to Nicole and Aaron, Eric Hansen on the birth of their second granddaughter, Hannah Evelyn, who was born to her, their daughter, Melissa and Roger, and big sister for Olivia, and also mazel tov to Gavin and Shirley Herman on the birth of their sixth grandchild, Etiel Nehemia, who was born to Mark and Debbie this past week, brother to Adelia, Hillel, and Ayala. We have lots of things that are upcoming. Um, next Shabbat, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., our Shabbat morning service next week, Friday the 5th of November at 8 o'clock, our regular Arab Shabbat service, and Saturday the 6th of November at 10 a.m., regular Shabbat morning service. Lots of things upcoming, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service. We're just about a month away from Hanukkah. Um, actually, we're just a week away from another holiday that's probably not as well known. It's the holiday of Sigurd, and I think I'll probably speak about that next week, which is a holiday that comes to us from the Jews of Ethiopia. But Hanukkah is a month away as well, and we're getting prepared. So look, look forward to hearing more about how we're going to be celebrating here at Solel. We have some great opportunities. Um, one of the great opportunities is a film series, The Women of Solel, in conjunction with the Memsha Films, invites you to register for the 2021 Hanukkah Film Festival. That's going to take place from November 28th to December 5th. There will be award-winning new films that you can view from the comfort of home on your TV or computer or mobile device. 11 films will be available to you for 14 days. And you can use the uh, promo code SOLEL to get a discount, and some of the funds will actually support Solel. So there's more info in your shamus about that. As well, we're going to be start, starting to uh, share our Hanukkah supplies. We have for sale wrapping paper, candles, tablecloths, paper plates, napkins, cards, all kinds of things. If you contact the Solo office, you can find out what we've got and how to pick it up. Um, they'll also be available during Beit Sefer hours on Sundays, starting not this Sunday, but next week in November. And as well, we will have latkes again this year. Very excited about that. Latkes will be available for pickup starting Monday, November 8th. You can reserve packages of 10 for $10 by contacting Dave Gordon. Again, more info is in your shamus about that. Solel focus groups, we want to hear from you. That's you and you. <laughs> um, we're bringing Solel members together to focus groups on Zoom to find out how you've been feeling throughout the COVID-19 experience. We want to know how you'd like to engage with Solel going forward services, school, meetings, social, and office, and what we still need to do as we continue in our reopening process. Focus groups are open to all members, so we encourage you to participate. Very important, we would like to know your preferred date, your session that you're going to attend by this coming Monday, November 1st. So please check your shamanist or the letter that you should have gotten from the Solel office and let us know about that. And. Um, Path, our Pathway Breakfast Club program needs help. As many of you know, Solel is, is one of the founding congregations of the Pathway Housing Community Housing Project. Part of that is Breakfast Club that provides um, takeout breakfast to a lot of the kids that live there. We're looking for volunteers to help our coordinator to pack and prepare breakfast. If you're available, you're an early riser and you're available at 6.45 in the morning, um, we'd love to have you be part of that. So you can contact Shirley Evans. Again, more info is in the Shamas. Um, I'll let you read all the rest of the announcements that were in this week's Shamas or check them out on our website. And um, if you have more questions, please feel free to contact the office. So we're going to close our service with the words of Kiddush for Arab Shabbat. It's my pleasure to call upon John Lucen, who will lead us, page 163. If you're joining us from home, we invite you to raise a glass and toast l'chaim. Those of us here in the sanctuary will have our own to go after service. V'hi erev v'hi rochei yom hashishi, now the whole universe, sky, earth, and all their array was completed. But the seventh day, God had ended the work of creation and rested with all work completed. Then God blessed the seventh day and called it holy. For this day, God has completed the work of creation.
Shabbat of peace, of joy, and of rest. Shabbat Shalom. Please help yourself to Oneg to go in the foyer on the way out. I don't know if we have coffee or not. I know there was a poll being taken. So we do have coffee if you want coffee. Personally, I don't want coffee, but you can have some. Shabbat Shalom.